Hi, I'm Alex, the creator of Inlets, and I'm going to show you how to set up a HTTPS tunnel with a custom domain, and then you can do whatever you want with that. It's going to be using a server on DigitalOcean for your public IP address. We're going to automate that through a tool called Inlets CTL, and then you can run the client wherever you want. So the first step for us is to head over to the docs and there's a tutorial here all about using this inlet CTL. This will create a server for us on our preferred cloud, in our preferred region, which runs our public tunnel. Now, if you're using a SaaS product, the, the tunnel server would already exist and you're sharing that with everyone else. It's probably heavily rate limited and only available in certain locations. I'm on DigitalOcean here. So the first thing I need to do is generate a new token I'm going to give this a name and it needs the right scope. Now, depending on what cloud you use, the docs will tell you what you need to do. I'm going to copy this text over to my terminal, token.txt. And now I can actually just go and create my server. Well, one thing that you do need to bear in mind is that because we're going to get our custom domain, we actually need to buy a domain. Now I have one already and I've registered it with DigitalOcean. And so if I go over to my domains page under networking, I can type in the new IP address of the machine I create, um, and then I can add that domain. So I'm actually going to use this 06S, which stands for open FAS, and I'll be putting in something like um, tunnel, uh, and then I'll put the IP address, I like a quite short lifetime and that will be tunnel 06s on you. You'll have a different subdomain. You can buy these for about $10 a year. So the way that I organize this was we'll put a domain in. We know that's tunnel 06s io. We then have this longer command. So because we're going to edit it, I'm just going to put echo first and that allows me to then just customize it. So we're using the create command. DigitalOcean is the provider I'm using, but there's others listed here. London one is a region that I want. It's closest to my home. And access token file is this token text. Let's encrypt domain can actually take multiple domains. So you could have one exit server, you might have 10 domains. I've only got the one here. And we can say whether we want that to be a production issuer or staging. Um, if you're not sure what you're doing, you could use a staging just to get used to it and then switch over to the production one later. Now the second command on this screen is how I can create a domain with DigitalOcean if I'm using the CLI. Now it's up to you what you want to use. If you don't have your DNS with DigitalOcean, you'll have a dashboard, whether that's Google Domains or Namecheap or AWS. What you effectively need is a, a DNS, a record, to map the IP address you've been given to your domain. So I'm going to do that through the UI. We've got our, our subdomain. Here's our IP address printed out for us. And now I'm going to create that record. In the bottom half of the screen, we could potentially ping this already. Um, it, I don't know if my DNS will have resolved. Well, it has. So DNS can be slow. That might be one reason why your, your inlet server might not come up the very first time you do it, uh, but it does retry. Now, the first thing we need to start configuring is where do we want our tunnel to go? Well, I'll just show you my Go application, which was taken from the Go docs, gobyexample.com. It's a HTTP server and it listens on port um, 8090. So if we run this, you could have any programming language. It doesn't have to be Go. Uh, Localhost 8090, headers. This is just one of the endpoints. And depending on what you pass in here, so we've got a content type, um, text, plain text. And now we've got that extra header. So I'm running a local server, and this is my upstream. Now your upstream could also be a machine on your network. It doesn't have to be your local computer. There's my upstream. 
Next, it's telling me to run the Inlets Pro client to specify a URL. Now that 8123 is the control plane for Inlets and it's authenticated. So we need this token and then we pass our upstream record. Now you can actually have more than one um, connection here. So I could have two domains on that server, run one tunnel here and a run, no, run another tunnel on my Raspberry Pi, both forwarding different services to different domains. Today we're just doing the one. So now we head over to a browser, tunnel, open fast.io, and we can see this page not found because we didn't put slash headers. So let's do that like we did with curl. Let's just double check headers. I wonder if this is running. Let's just double check. Okay, so connection refused. I wonder if we have anything in our main.go that's getting in the way. No, it looks good. Slash hello, he slash headers. Let's try them once more. Okay, I was obviously doing something wrong. So there is our hello, and we can curl it again in the same way from command line and we can curl the headers and now we can see we've actually got a bit more data and that's because um, it's telling us what it was forwarded for what the inlets ID is for that request now if I was to create a github repo and I wanted to get it to send webhooks to this URL I would simply copy and paste this URL into my github repo so let's create a new one And this will be a throwaway one, so um, let's just use one of their random names for this. That will do. And in this instance, we need to then um, go over to the settings page, webhooks, add a webhook. And then we put the address. Usually I prefer JSON formatted um, you can add a secret as well if you want to verify this on the other end. And you can either have the push event for code, um, everything or individual events. So did somebody star this or raise an issue? Once you click uh, the button to add this, they tend to send you like a test delivery, which you can see here. Um, but let's see if we could just have our program print something out whenever we get a call. So if we go to the root, uh, do we have um, format print line rec. It's either header or headers. We just try that way around. Okay, great. Now we should be able to re-deliver that So what did it give us? Okay, we were doing slash headers. Let's change your webhook URI to the root. Update the webhook again. Now do another retry and we should get our format print message. There we go. Now there are other things that you can do that are interesting. We can see this is a GitHub event ping. If I create a new issue, test the tunnel, um, and hit submit new issue, then we've got that event coming through to our local computer now directly from GitHub. And this is part of any other system that you want to play with. And you can also verify that signature using a technique called HMAC. Now, my tunnel is set up for that local host, but I have a Raspberry Pi on my internal network and its IP address is 192.168.0.15. It has open files on port 8080. So I'm changing my upstream, running the tunnel client again. And now it's giving me the login page for OpenFAS. And I'm not sure if I have a function that I can show you there. Let me have a look. There we go. So I have, I do have a function on there. 
this RPI bot. And we can also access it with curl. That's running my Raspberry Pi. And I didn't have to create a new server. So the server is created once. You can keep that. You can have them with different names. It's entirely up to you. Now, finally, if you decide you don't want to be paying for that server each month, now each of these is going to cost you, depending what cloud you use, perhaps $5 per month per tunnel, uh, you can run this delete command. And once we do that, our tunnel will get deleted. Now, I've shown you the auth token here. If you want to rotate that, you can usually log in over SSH into your tunnel server, change the token, let's say you've shared it with somebody, um, or you could just delete this server and recreate it. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, head over to the documentation, docs.inlets.dev, or check out the homepage. There's also an FAQ with commonly asked questions. Thanks.